so real quick before you did that did Um, mm -hmm. And your your origin story, like how did you get into? Is that he? Uh, he made an age joke the last time we were. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that kooka. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Um. Listen, we got a great guest today. Um, his name is Carson Whaley. I've had him on here before, so we've had his origin story, how he how he started, what he's doing, things like that. If you missed that, go back. It's in one of the previous episodes that we be before this year, before we even started naming the the show. Um, but welcome to Real Estate Talk with Randy Steadwell. I am Randy Steadwell. Nice to meet you. If you're new to the show, please, please do comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, ask any questions you want in the comments, so on and so forth. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on Carson. Carson, how you doing? What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. Awesome. Fine. So um, so we have, we're actually just talking about your deal you had in Hazel Park. Yeah, so, um, we're, we're doing some comps. Yeah, running some comps and things like that. So, um, is that is that property a, uh, a in good condition? Uh, a good, uh, a good exterior, is, exterior is in good condition. It has I mean, not newer, but it was uh, before it was tenant occupied. It was owner occupied, and so he had done um, roof, face of shop, soffit, gutters, siding, um, all that good stuff. The insides just. Hasn't been touched in 15 years. Needs a facelift. So. Shit, just a nice cosmetic rehab. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it appears to be. So, so by all means, if you're interested in the Hazel Park area, you, you got his number right there. They, um, you know, give him a call. Um, but we'll go into some business strategies and things like that. Um, so, since the last time we had you on, I think it was back in October. Um, yeah, I think so. You know, yeah. How is uh, how's business going? Have you changed anything? Like. You know what have you learned and you know. yeah uh so i think yeah it was like october when we last yeah. met um the reason i say that is because that's when i had just moved down here into detroit so yeah. i mean uh by by um you know force of my 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 conditions now uh yeah i have you know things have changed for business as far as um you know i still do everything out of genesee county flint area okay. um little bit down in Oakland Park, obviously with or Oakland or Oakland County, uh, obviously yeah. at that Hazel Park deal. But um, yeah, I, I would say that uh, you know now, um, you know I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm I'm looking at, uh, which mm -hmm. has kind of forced me to get better at running my numbers uh, strictly just because I don't want to drive up there every single day, uh, you know, and just look at every house to look at every house. And so yeah. um, it's forced me to get uh, a little better things too, just to be a little more efficient. So, Got it. Yeah. So are you trying to do a little bit more virtual or just schedule everything uh, when um, you up there all at once? So, yeah, a little bit of both to answer your question. Um, I still look at everything that I buy, obviously, um, yep. or, or wholesale and buy. But um, I would say that my process is a little bit different as far as talking to a seller, getting a little bit of a pre-commitment. Um, mm -hmm. Most, not most cases, I would say 50-50. Um, I will get a contract out of somebody before I go to the house. And if I can't get a contract, then I do something called an upfront contract. Um, yeah. It's basically just a little bit of commitment from you to know that basically I'm setting the stage and letting you know I'm going yeah. to buy the property, not to take a look and get you an offer, or let you know what I think it's worth, you know, Got it. Um, uh, you know, and if they have anything against that, then I don't really go up to the house. So Yeah. So it's basically like you're saying, OK, based on what you've told me, if everything right. that you said is accurate, uh -huh. this is what I can pay. Yep. And uh, most times it's it's on, um, but okay. sometimes it's off. And when it is, they can understand because it comes from a place of, well, look, you know, so the furnace was new. Furnace is clearly not new. You know, it looks to yeah. be 15, 20 years old. Um, you know, we're going to adjust accordingly from there. 
you know, um, as far as price goes. And so it's not, it's really not too bad when we need renegotiate price. Um, I think, I think so too. Sellers, right? Like they're not looking at homes every single day. So they're going to miss things or have a little bit of different interpretation or, um, what's good to you might not be good to me or, you know, me. Uh, yeah. So it's not really like the blame game. As soon as we get there, we just have a reasoning for why now we're different. So. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, most definitely. And that's awesome. So are you still cold calling? Like how are you getting your leads? Yeah. So um, right now we're doing, we're just still just doing outbounds. I mean, I do want to put some inbound marketing together, but okay. uh, outbounds are doing well. So I do both cold calling and texting. I have um, a couple of VAs that do both for me. Um, they push right. them over the CRM is warm. Uh, I take it from there, but um, yeah, everything that I do still is cold and outbound um, between texting and calling. Who do you use for your texting? Uh, launch control. I think okay. I, I use launch control. I know launch control and um, what is it? I think it's REI reply. I've yeah. heard some really good stuff about them too. They sound pretty similar. Um, I think it just depends on what you want or how many people you have working with you, you know, how much yeah. you pull in and whatnot. So, yeah, most definitely. Um, I actually follow the same type of system. I just don't do the texting. I'm just doing cold calling at the moment. Texting so. has worked out well for us, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised. I didn't really have any expectation, but it's, it's, I've only been doing it since the beginning of the year, but um, I'll tell you that so many more people reply to you. And, um, I think because the answer rate is, is higher, mm-hmm. um, the chances of getting a yes is higher. Just obviously it's a numbers game, um, yeah. but it's just funny. I like it just because, you know, even if you have like a list of, you know, how, let's say you have a big list of, you know, 5,000 people on it that you're mm-hmm. kind of, you're cold calling throughout the month. Like there's, if you go, if you have a dialer, that will show you how many times you've called numbers, mm-hmm. um, you can pull that and then look at how many times people have never been called or never never answered and it's such yeah. a high rate it's like then you finally get them on the phone after calling that number five six times just for them to tell you no right Versus i sent out you know i think you can send a bat 150 text messages as a batch so you send a batch in the morning and send out to 150 people or phone numbers yes. um even if they come back and say no f off whatever at least i got that response out and then i can push you out instead of continue marketing to you got it um, at least a res- uh, you know like to me a response any response is better than no response Oh, 100%. You know, I, I, I'm all for, you know, at least getting something out of them, you know? Yeah. So, so but yeah, no texting is, um, I like, I like it a lot. I mean, I think it all works, but for me, I just, I like the texting. <clears throat> yeah. I, I think I need to get it in, into it a little bit more, um, a little bit deeper. So, um, I use call tools for my cold calling. I've never used call tools, but I've heard a lot, you know, I've heard call tools a lot, a lot of programs, a lot of people throw call yeah. tools. I but, actually, really, I actually really like call tools. Is that a dialer? Is that, is, is that just yeah. a dialer or what is that? So it's a dot, it, you can use it as a dialer and a CRM, but um, I put all my lists inside there and I do everything. The only thing that goes over my podio is anything that anybody says yes. Okay. We fill it out and it just goes over to the podio. So okay. now my my podio is not filled with all these leads that we haven't contacted. Yeah, right. That's how mine's set up. The only thing that's in, if you're in my podio, it's because you raise your hand. You know exactly. Like, yeah. So, so um, and it makes it it just keeps it clean. Um, I like it, and uh, I like it because if if your podio is that clean, then too what you can do from there, which I just a lot of the things I'm doing this year, honestly, is not much different. I'm just I I have pulled probably fifty sixty thousand addresses over the last three years and kept them all in um uh what is it batch leads i think bad i like batch leads for a lot of their stuff i don't use their call i don't use their dialer or any of their marketing stuff but um i use them for their skip tracing or for their i, I get them to pull my lists mm-hmm. um and then saving them on that that list tab that they have is really yeah. cool because um everything that i've done in the last three years I, or well, i guess i've only been doing it for about three years um i've pulled that and took all of those people who uh, were still on the table that haven't told me no, or we bought it, got a yeah. deal done or whatever, uh, threw them inside the texting. Mm-hmm. And that's all I've done. And all the texting, all the deals we've gotten this year, which I mean, I say all, but I think it's been probably four deals with a fifth one in the works. The one I got, the Hazel Park deal, that's from texting. Yeah. Um, 
all this came from prior prior data I've had the last two to three years. So, wow. I mean, if you have enough data, I, I would like I would you know squeeze the ju- there's still juice in there. I would still see yeah. squeeze the juice out of it. You know, just because you use them last year, like I don't know, it's just crazy for me. You know, unless you've only, I've only been doing it for three years, but if you're in your first or second year, you don't have that. This year, I've just went back and, and, and remarketed a lot of those same people, and I've gotten. I think half the deals this year came from that. So. Especially if it's a campaign that you know worked. Yeah, yeah. that's where you want to track your campaigns too. Yeah, like you put, you know, if you have a deal log or whatever, that's your CRM or you're running like a, um, you know, a spreadsheet on Google. It is so important to know where you pulled that from. Um, mm-hmm. You know, whether you're beating a dead horse, you're actually still pulling some money out of that that, that you know certain list or whatever you had pulled. Super important, definitely. All the little things you don't think about, you know, year one and two and stuff. <laughs> you're just so worried about getting a deal. Um, which again, I mean, that should be your far, you know, your front focus. But some of the little things you pick up along the way, where you're like, just the little things that yeah. you know can make you that much more money. Is you just your, you know, your awareness goes up obviously, over time. Oh, most definitely. So and nothing you can do about it except for you know through time and I guess experience. But <laughs> yeah, and so what are the some of the lists that you've been pulling? Like as far as um, uh, like the uh, like the criteria, like what, what the criteria, yeah. What are you pulling? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I do, honestly, has been through um, a lot of the programs I've went to. But um, the two things that I do, as far as like this isn't the type, but like the two that I do is weekly distrust, and then monthly. Well, I, how would you say? I guess weekly distress and then a monthly large, more general list. So okay. weekly distress, which there's probably 10, 15 different types you could do, but I do probate, pre-probate, and inheritance. Just okay. because inheritance could be probate, probate was pre-probate at once, and pre-probate yep. will obviously. So I try to beat them at all corners there. So that's why I do inheritance, probate, and pre-probate. And it's weekly distress because I get it every Wednesday from the source that pulls it from the courthouse. Got it. So then uh, on a monthly list, what I do is I pull probably 5,000 records for the texting, 5,000 for the calling. And um, those are usually uh, those are usually um, motivation or I'm sorry, opportunity mm-hmm. mixed with motivation. So opportunity, like let's say you're looking just to make cash offers. You're not worried about sub two or anything like that. Um, opportunity would be equity or it's fully paid off or um, yeah. they've owned it for a long time. So if they've owned it for a long time and if, if they have refinanced, you know, they've, they've appreciation plus paid out. So that's opportunity. And then motivation is usually what I'll do. Like, for example, is throw vacant on mm-hmm. there. But then I'll go a little bit deeper to see, like if I'm, so if I'm, I'm pulling a list and I say you know, there's 8,000 people on this list, I've learned a sweet spot of, of how many records you pull. Um, yeah. For me anyways, it seems to be about 5,000 or so. Yeah. 5, 000. If I have eight, nine, like it's too, too, too general and you're wasting time. Yeah. Um, so if it's, if it is, say I have um, equity in there, a large amount of equity, then I put the vacancy tab on there. The other thing I'll do is throw at least a $5,000 lien on there, whether that's a mortgage or taxes or whatever, because yeah. they have some type of payment or some type of, um, you know, post for payment that they need to uh, make do before, you know, foreclosure yeah. or something like that. So um, it just depends on how, how small or large of an area I'm pulling a list from. But typically it's, you know, opportunity mixed with one or two types of potential for motivation. So um, we do a lot of uh, tired landlord and... Um, so which usually is tired landlord, uh, or what do you call it? Not owner occupied. Yeah. With, yeah. Um, some sort of lean on whether that's a mortgage or some sort of, uh, involuntary lien. Yeah. I was, I was doing tired landlords and I was not being, getting successful hits because they're all like, well, yeah, give me an offer or basically I want retail price. Right. You know, right. And, yeah. and I'm like, sorry, that's not going to happen. So right. obviously you're not a tired landlord. So, <laughs> yep. you know. but I'll tell you what, the tired landlords, I mean, it, it's hit or miss because yeah. you never know what their situation is. But when you have that lean on there and all of a sudden you ring that one person who has been paid in three months, five months, yes. like, now they have pain. So as for as many of them that are out there that have, you know, debt, debt on their property, 
but their property is cash flowing with a good tenant, you're still going to get those two, three, four, five deals on that list where yeah. someone's tenant is not, you know, that, that property is not performing. Um, yeah. And I like those because those are, I mean, those are, that was so a goal. They, those are, I, I like working those deals because the sellers are, are obviously a little more keen to, to real estate. And so yep. um, it's easier to explain a win-win to them, um, you know, and, and as long as you're actually providing a solution to them, yep. they're, they're easy to work, easier to work with, in my opinion. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're probably, you know, some of them are going to give you a hard time. That's just kind of some people's personality type. But I mean, I don't know. I seem to click with those type of people. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room. 